Madame. Okay. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. I just feel it's, it's still uh, in the morning. But of course you're not. Okay, I hope you are doing well today. And uh, welcome back to the correspondent of Lusa News Agency, Elena, that's uh, coming back today. Okay, this morning, the President of the General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa, celebrated the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights with a group of children from the kindergarten class of the United Nations Child Care Center in a very short ceremony in front of the Eleanor Roosevelt Monument, which is located in the UN Gardens. Mrs. Espinosa and the kids recreated the iconic photo of 1950 in which children from the UN International Nursery School, as it was called at that time, here in New York, were invited to learn about the declaration. Mrs. Espinosa said, and I quote, if Eleanor Roosevelt and her fellow committee members were here today, they would doubtless be immensely cheered and grat gratified at the progress that the world has made in the intervening years. Today, we have a UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, a Human Rights Council, the International Criminal Court, and a global understanding of what constitutes human rights. Of course, some of the international architecture needs improving and strengthening. We also need to be on our constant guard against those who would abuse universal rights and who would try and set the clock back to darker times. The event was uh, attended by Commissioner Penny Abbey Wardener from the New York Mayor's Office for International Affairs, the UN Assistant Secretary General Elliot Harris from the Department for Economic and Social Affairs, and the grandson of Ms. Eleanor Roosevelt, Professor Frank Roosevelt, and his wife, Grace Roosevelt. The event was moderated by Uncle Woman, Cherry Wells, from New York One, and will be broadcast tonight. So that is uh, from us, but there is a PJ's agenda for today, if you're interested. Mrs. Spinoza began her day meeting permanent representatives at the UN for the Morning Minga, a monthly dialogue about the work agenda of her presidency, and today the theme was gender equality. She also took part in the TEDx Place des Nations, or, or Place des Nations, of, on women. It's a talk uh, via uh, video conference as the main event happens uh, in Geneva. And later today, she will receive in separate meetings the ambassadors of Botswana and Malta and chair the meeting on the situation in the Middle East at 3 p.m. at the J Hall. This is the item 38. This evening, the PGA will speak at the opening uh, of, the exhibit, uh, of the exhibit of the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at the visitors' lobby, as Steph said before. And then this is actually all from us today. There won't be any briefing tomorrow, so tomorrow we're gonna have the day off after the, the SG's uh, briefing, and uh, probably a longer weekend from us. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Ben, go ahead. Just um, now there's two draft resolutions for this afternoon. Do we know what order are they going to be voted on? This, uh, this is going to be decided at the start of the meeting. And uh, as we said before, uh, the rules of procedure of the General Assembly, so the PGA is uh, going to uh, follow them as uh, she, as it is actually her responsibility. As she said, she said, uh, declared a, a stake out uh, to one of our colleagues who asked. And uh, if there is a decision uh, regarding the majority for the resolution, like for other resolutions, it will be a decision by member states. Yes, Hamid. Yes, I don't think it's left to the interpretation. There is a, uh, a rule, number 83, which says, if the matter is discussed of great importance that deals with peace and security, then resolution should be adopted by two-third majority. If this item, which has been on the UN agenda since 1946, is not a, a matter of an important matter, then what is an important matter that this Article 83 applies to? The decision on uh, the course of action, which action is going to be taken now uh, 
on the resolutions that are uh, on the table. As you probably uh, know from the UN journal, we have that three documents will be made by uh, member states. And uh, this is what I have to tell you this morning. But of course, I would like to invite you all to uh, tune in. The meeting will be webcast. Mr. Abadi, go ahead. Thank you, Monica. Mm -hmm. Michel Bachelet, the Human Rights Commissioner, has asked uh, China to accept monitors to come in the Xinjiang region and check the situation of human rights of the Uyghur people. Uh, what is the reaction of the President of the General Assembly? The, the issue that you are mentioning uh, right now, I heard your um, question to the staff. Uh, I haven't seen the, the reports, I haven't seen her declaration, and I would uh, refer you to uh, her office. I mean, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bachelet's office, yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Elena. Thank you very much, I'll, Monica. I'll go back to you, Hamid. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question also <clears throat> about the Global co uh, Pact of Migration mm -hmm. in Marrakesh. Mm -hmm. uh, as the, um, the agreement in New York was made in September 2016 at the General Assembly with all the countries, um, um, what matter, I mean, how worried is the presence of the General Assembly now about so many countries stepping back and not willing to take um, the Global Pact? The PGA is looking to a strong conference in Marrakesh. She has been working in, on this issue um, since she actually was elected by uh, the General Assembly. Uh, you, may, you may remember back in June. And uh, she has been working with countries. She declared here and uh, in interviews as well and asked that she understands that some countries have uh, some uh, questions. And uh, she doesn't seem, uh, she seems this as part of the dialogue. And also that this uh, particular global compact uh, is not uh, a legally binding document. So countries can have some, some countries, a few countries have to say because the, the majority uh, is, uh, uh, supporting uh, um, the, the global compact, as it was agreed here, actually, in New York. Um, but some countries uh, can have, uh, can make some reflections now, and uh, that doesn't, uh, uh, that doesn't uh, shock with the sovereigns of the countries, as some people uh, probably uh, not accurately uh, uh, say. Uh, and they can join later. So she, she sees this uh, as a part of, uh, of the dialogue that is being fostered. And um, migration is an important issue. We cannot go away from it. Uh, the, the, Mr. Spinoza defined before, and I think this is a very interesting quote, that the history of humanity is the history of migration. So people are on the move, and we have to recognize this. So she's looking to a very strong conference in Marrakesh, and uh, we will see uh, next week. Is she Hamid. going to be there? Thank you. She, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's uh, traveling to Marrakesh. She'll be there uh, for both days. But thank you, Valena. Hamid. Uh, thank you, Monica, and thank you for your patience. As a matter of principle, does the PGA believe that people under occupation, foreign domination, subjugation, deny their freedom, and deny their, to exercise their right to self-determination, do they have the right to resist all these conditions, including occupation? And I can refer you to at least a three uh, GA resolution that, uh, that, in, that empower the people who are under occupation to resist their occupation. You asked her a question in the first press conference, and I think she uh, gave you uh, her answer about uh, uh, her opinion on the, uh, this issue. And um, generally speaking, and we said that before, I think I said that yesterday when Mr. Abadi asked uh, a similar question, resolutions are there to be um, abide with and to be implemented. So uh, the PJ said that before, and uh, not in regard with a specific resolution, we don't uh, pick and, and choose, but the resolutions that have been uh, uh, approved by the General Assembly, by member states, they are there to be abide with and uh, to be implemented. So I thank you all for today and for your patience as well. Uh, I know it's been a, a, an early morning for many of you, and I see you on Monday, okay? So have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thank you. Bye.